liberty and justice for all. And a moment of silence. Thank you. All right, well, thanks for everybody coming out tonight. Um, Bernie decided to advocate for one meeting so that the guy who's been the chairman of all these other ones gets to do it again, I guess. So, um, anybody have any changes to the agenda? Hearing none, I'll entertain a motion to accept as presented. I'll make a motion to accept it as presented. I'll second it. All in favor say aye. Aye. All opposed? All right. Um, is everybody that is in person signed up to speak at the public hearing that wants to? I mean, for the public speaker. No. Public speaker. Okay, no. so all right. Um, and I'll note, we did not receive any uh, public comments through the public comment form on the website. Okay. All right, well, if you're ready, I will open the public hearing. Clyde Humphrey. And, and everybody, if you can try to keep your comments to, you know, three minutes or less, I mean, obviously we're not coming, so we'll be here all night. I'm confident I'll be less than three minutes, maybe even less than two minutes. Uh, my name is Clyde Humphrey, and I think what you have before you this evening is a good ordinance. Uh, I realize it's been a lot of hard work over the past uh, uh, one or two years as we've been working on this, uh, but I think we've arrived at a good place. Uh, I don't think it's perfect. And I have submitted to you, and it's in your package, a uh, list of uh, proposed uh, changes. Uh, but they're not anything that you haven't seen before. And uh, uh, given where we are in this process, uh, I think you ought to pass the ordinance that is before you. Uh, if you wish to entertain changes, uh, then I would like you to consider the changes that I have submitted. Uh, but the better is the enemy of the good, and I think what you have in front of you is a good, good ordinance. Uh, thank you. Is that less than two minutes? Kenja Melody. I'm just going to agree with what Clyde said. I think that the documents y'all have crafted is a very good ordinance for Page County, and I know I've been a big thorn in your side, but I appreciate your patience, and thank you for taking care of the county. Rod Graves. Thank you all. Uh, I just uh, want to reiterate some of what has been said tonight. Um, uh, one thing I'd like to say is that uh, the county and its forefathers, those that came before us, uh, uh, we saw stand really big shoulders. Uh, I think include myself and everybody in this room. Uh, they built up the county to, to where it is today. And I, I think the reason I've been so vigilant in my efforts to, to talk to you all about this and have dialogue is that uh, I feel like some of that was threatened. And, uh, this body here has been incredibly thoughtful. I mean, really been good. I've not agreed with you all every time. Uh, you all know that. Uh, and I feel like we found compromise uh, and intelligent dialogue. And that's so important as Americans. I think we've, we've had a rare opportunity to do that. Um, I cherish that. So um, I tip my hat to you all. You all have done a great job. You worked hard. and. Uh, I think you all have got a terrific uh, plan ahead of you. Thank you. Isabel Graves. I just, 
wanted to thank you all for your hard work and for um, achieving something that's uh, fairly satisfactory um, to our um, uh, view of um, the future of the, the county. And um, I'm not a good public speaker, so looking at my notes, um, my husband is pretty much, um, and the other people said what I wanted to say, but I, I wanted to remind everyone that um, COVID-19 has brought really a devastating blow to the tourism industry worldwide. And it has destroyed or put on hold thousands, if not millions of jobs. And yet, here in Page County, uh, we have survived. And some of the people in the tourism industry, like in the cabin rental business, have actually thrived better than ever. Um, there is also renewed interest in Page County concerning real estate. The beauty of this place, which is the core view of the Shenandoah National Park, is a massive economic engine. It is our pearl. Uh, we need to protect it, to cherish it, and never undersell it or give it away. It is priceless. And I, I think that you have done a good job um, trying to find um, a way in which um, solar energy can fit in and, and work with what we have. Thank you. Beth Snyder. <coughs> um, I, would, I want to agree with uh, the other speakers. Um, thank you for the hard work that you've done to uh, craft an ordinance that gives reasonable protections and um, I hope that you prove it tonight. Thank you. Paul Otto. Good evening. Good evening. Uh, don't worry, I'm not making preparations for a long speech. Uh, just want to thank you all for uh, your diligence and uh, your effort that uh, you put into uh, this draft that you had before you. I want to echo Mr. Humphrey's remarks. And uh, I think uh, uh, there's, uh, you know, a few uh, issues that haven't been fully addressed because of time and budgetary constraints, but uh, I think what you've got here is a, is a good basis uh, for an ordinance that uh, provides a reasonable opportunity and, <coughs> and offers reasonable protections. And I uh, hope you pass it on to the uh, uh, the board, and uh, perhaps they can make improvements upon it. Thank you. Charles Newton. Hello, gentlemen. I was, I have to say, I was concerned about what was going on in your meetings during the first six or seven months of the year, but I think that you've, in the last few months, you've really uh, put together a, a good plan and uh, method. The one thing that I wish that uh, we could develop, and maybe the Board of Supervisors will uh, be able to take comments on this, but a, a way to prevent what happened in Spotsylvania County, where landowners in the year that they were applying or signing up with a solar utility uh, did, did immediate logging of their property to get rid of any forest. And I hope that we can somehow find a way to protect our forests here. I'm, I'm thinking in terms of, you know, uh, saying that perhaps that if the land is clear cut within two years prior to the uh, application, that it, the application will not be accepted. So, something along that line. That, that's not too burdensome on the landowner if they want to manage their forest, but would certainly uh, stop the wholesale clear cutting just just to have a uh, a solar field thank you chris anderson good evening commissioners i know you all have worked very hard very diligently i think the ordinance that you've crafted is sound um, it's moving the county ahead in a in a good way and i encourage you to pass it this evening Thank you. Hearing no further speakers. All right. 
And I will close the public hearing and I guess we'll open it up for discussion. Donnie, you got anything? I'll start on this side. Thank you for good ordinance. What we come up with, we've got a lot of work on it. And I don't see why we should modify it in the way we do it. I think we should show up to it. Steve? I did a degree, so I think the hard work we put into it is showing up, especially by the people tonight talking, saying that we've done a decent job, so I think we should go forward with it also. Here. I'm agreeing with the other two here, uh, which I haven't been here on the council or on the committee as long as the rest of y'all have, but uh, what I've seen, you know, accomplished in, since I've been here, and I'm pretty well satisfied with what we have accomplished. So, I mean, as far as I can see, uh, the only thing I did see maybe is a few words in the small medium scale uh, on that there but uh, as far as everything else i'm fine with i'm good with it it's been a long hard struggle but we got through it and it can be some changes to it but it has to go beyond us to have anything done Not that it's a big deal. If we had an opportunity to change one thing, and it was something in uh, Mr. Humphrey's comments about the small and the medium, there were setbacks established in there. And, and on one side, the, the comprehensive plan was supposed to encourage small and medium. On the other hand, we're looking at solar panels from the house. Solar panels are solar panels. Whether it's an acre or uh, 200 acres, it's going to be negatively impacted. So. And we've got a blanket setback there. It's not as big as the utility scale, but it's still a setback. If it was next to a cornfield, would it matter? Or if it was next to a parcel with a residence on it? Not residential, a parcel with a residence. We have to care about that. that would be the only change I would recommend is that we want to do that or just leave it a blanket setback. Well, we'll come back to that. Uh, Bernie? Um, this has been a long, hard trip. Uh, we went line by line by line. We didn't try to slam dunk anything. We, we went through it. It's been painful. Um, some people didn't agree with me. I didn't agree with them. But, um, you know, that's, that's what uh, it's about, being on a planning commission. Sometimes there's going to be debate, major debates, and we went through it. And the vote is the whole county, not just one or two people that are saying what they want to say and thinking that we should only go their way. But it's the whole county here has been protected. And I'm proud of every one of you, and I appreciate everything that you've all said during this whole thing. Thank you very much. Uh, also, I feel 
forgot at the top of the page, A1 at the end of the sentence, and will be expected during the process. Rather than that, it's better grammar. Page three, at the bottom of the page, number seven, surety or security for ground maintenance. I assume we meant grounds, plural. Not just the ground, but the ground, meaning, you know, for what. Uh, four, top of the page, the word modeling. Should have only one L. That's just a spelling mistake. And on page five, minimum standards, A1. Uh, the verbiage coverage area has not been defined. But if you look in, in definitions, what has been defined is acreage coverage. So I suggest that we replace coverage area by acreage coverage, since that is the definition that we have in definition. I just want to be clear so that we don't have any loopholes. And other than uh, discussing the setbacks for a small and medium scale, I don't have anything else. All right, well, since it sounds like we've got, I mean, we want to just go ahead and. Oh, yes, I'm sorry. Them. We also need to address, are we going to restrict um, in zoning district 72B? Are we going to keep the restriction in ag zone for roof mounted? Or are we going to allow farmers to have ground mounted facilities? Because that will impact what we're going to do in the medium and small scale as far as the setbacks are concerned. Oh, we talked about that at the last meeting. Yeah, and what was decided, I can't remember. To allow ground mounted. Have we decided yeah. to allow ground mounted? Yeah. Okay. Did All right. I don't know if we have. But we did decide, vote. yes. We did so decide then we need to. Okay. All right. Well, maybe um, Rebecca, can you clarify? Do we need to? Do we need to add or subtract something to put the ground mounted in there, or how, what would be necessary for that? Let's see. Let me let me take a quick read of it. Uh, All right. All right. This small, 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 small. So so small allows um, already. Medium scale. What I would suggest would be to say medium scale solar facilities may be installed by right roof mounted or ground mounted in commercial agricultural and industrial zoning districts and then strike and roof mounted only in agricultural zoning districts okay. so, so everybody's good with that i would prefer that we go with the roof mount because you know, you're taking up precious land that are going to have it out in the fields and stuff like that. When we, when a farmer can put it on these roofs and use, utilize the roof of these, you know, these buildings, uh, you know, we always want more land to grow stuff on, but we don't want to take up two or three acres for a medium size. So, solar panels to be out in the field or something. Well, the, the, a lot of the land is like, Getting here for the for the large scale is that it can't be more than 50 percent of prime farmland or whatever. You know as well as I do, there's a lot of places that really aren't that good sometimes to, to do that. So it would be good for for the solar. So I think we should have the option of both one or the other. Mr. Chair, if if uh, we have a lot of old double deck chicken houses in the county, many of those are have been retired and used for storage. Um, the engineering that would be required to put on, on what is already uh, a, a fear of snow collapse building, the engineering that would be required and then the adjustment to the building that would be required if you're, if, if you're deemed that's necessary is the reason that I step back from roof only because I would rather spend the money to demolish the building, use the pad, and not spend 
money engineering and then having to rebuild a double deck. We do have a lot of chicken houses in the house that are not being used. Can't insure them sometimes because of snow collapse already. And they would be virtually, I mean, it's very difficult now to use an old double deck anyway. They're not um, set up like the flat houses are. Uh, generally, they're not, they're, not as, they're not as large. They occupy less space. But many of them do have concrete floors. The cost of engineering would probably allow you to remove the, the building if you didn't have to do any of that expense. And then you'd have a flat pad on which you, which wouldn't be taking up any more space, but it, it occurs to me that if you're not allowed to do it, then you won't be able to do it. So that's my take. Well, my gut reaction is is that the roof mounted would be preferred, be preferred in cases where it is possible, but in cases where it's possible, I don't think we should limit to say if you do build an old poultry house or if you have an old poultry house and you want to offset some of your cost of your electricity by putting up the solar panels on the back side of it out of view, I don't really think you should penalize anybody because they take up two acres there to help offset some of their cost. But I, I do understand building with your, you know, we, we don't need to be taking a valuable farm land, but I think we should, I think you should go either or, but we should say have somewhere in our city, but the preference would be, you know, roof mounted if possible. Is that, that work for you? Yeah. Okay. All right. So I think we got that work through. And then, um, does anybody have any problems with her five minor changes? I'm assuming nobody does. Um, and then, yeah, I guess on the small and medium setbacks or whatever else, what I guess specifically is you two, what, what are you looking to just change it to or change I it I think right now it just says 50 feet. And I said, I don't want this to hold up because I think we've got a good document and it's been a long time getting here. I don't want this to derail that. We're just trying to balance out what the confidence is to encourage small and medium. So if we've got 50 feet all the time everywhere, if we've got a farm parcel that backs up to you know, a forest or another farm parcel that's just you know, hay or cornfield, 50 feet seems maybe not really reasonable. Now, if somebody buys that and wants to put a house there, well, then they know what they're getting into when they put the house there. So, you know, caveat them to the buyer you are. But if there are already houses there, it doesn't seem fair that they can use the regular setbacks. Tracy, correct me if I'm wrong. These would be treated just like an accessory outbuilding or something like that, and some of those setbacks can be as little as, what, 15 feet? 10 feet in residential. 15 everywhere else. Yeah, so an ag, if you've got a house on an ag piece of property, 15 feet away, you could have two acres of solar panels. So to afford them a little bit of extra protection and balance out encouraging small and medium to say 50 feet on a parcel adjacent, adjacent to a parcel with a residence, and just leave the zoning out of it. Don't say residential, just a parcel with a residence. That was my suggestion. Would that also apply to root mail? I don't think so because you can't control the setback. The setbacks are there, and whether the roof is shiny black or rusty tin, it doesn't really matter. It's I, I don't think I'd have an objection, but I, if, if by doing that, then you, you couldn't do it because of the setback. We'll specify ground mount. I'll just specify the ground mount. So, so you're so you're thinking we have we have a 50 foot setback from a residence on a ground mount and then just have whatever the basic setbacks are for the district for anything else. That's my fault. Okay. Are balance. you saying 50 foot from a residence or 50 foot from the property line of a property with a residence on it? I would say from the property yes. line. I would agree with that. So we can just modify it. the solar energy facility shall set back a minimum of 50 feet from an adjoining uh, of 50 feet from the property line of an adjoining property with a residence. What is the setback? Is it in an industrial zone, Tracy? 25 feet. And Rebecca, did you, did you hear that? Does that 
I mean, does that make sense to you? That does. Um, you know, when I came up with the 50 feet, I did look at your, your current setbacks, um, and I was assuming that you wanted, you know, to do some landscaping between. Um, so my, my only question is, in the cases where 